Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we have a juicy one for you. Ooh, this one's gonna be a bit controversial. I wasn't sure about doing this video, but Ollie has told me it has to be done. Today we are talking about things that you need to get out of your house immediately. Trends that are dead, things that are done, things that never were cool, remove them, skip them, don't have this in your home. Let's get started. So let's get started with the first one. The one that I think some of you are gonna to totally disagree with me on. I hate faux plant walls. I don't mind faux plants. I'm a big advocate for faux plants in your home. They're great for practicality. What I'm talking about is when you have those panels on the wall, so fake, bright green, tacky, 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 gonna be a huge dust trap. It really dates your home, just don't do it. It might have been done in restaurants, but it feels very sort of, four or five years ago, if I'm being generous, probably never even was a trend. So let's get a little closer look at what I'm talking about here. So if we look at the first image, I mean, this one, it, what is happening here? It's like it thinks it's a piece of art. How do you even clean this? And it's so bright green. And what I particularly hate about this is the fact that this would never be real. Like if you're gonna do a faux plant, make it look like it can be real. I mean, save the worst for last. This one, it's like, you ran out of bricks, you didn't have any plasterboard to make your walls, so you just got a load of fake plants. This is just so wrong on so many levels, I don't even know where to start. I don't mind, just like caveat, I don't mind the real plant walls, um, but I feel like there's a difference. And I think when you get a faux plant, what makes it look good and makes it look believable and real is if you mix it in with other things. Whereas when you're getting one of these faux plant walls en masse, instantly you know it's fake and I hate things that look instantly fake whereas when you have and I'm sure we've got an example that we can share with you of a faux olive tree for example we've used those in loads of projects you know you would totally believe that's real and it adds some interest to the room it's not overwhelming it's not super bright green super plasticky a lot of these faux plant walls have like a shiny texture um, they're all very unbelievable plant colours, they don't look realistic and I think they just dominate the rest of your room and for me when you're living in, you know, whether it's your living room or your bathroom or gym, whatever it is, everything should just feel harmonious, there should be nothing that's like screaming at you for attention and I don't know if it's just me but like I always think about things that I have in my home like how am I going to clean this? How do you clean a faux plant wall? Like, do you get the hoover? Do you get the duster? How many hours of your life is that gonna to take to clean? And if you don't clean it, like I have dust allergies, so I couldn't have that in my home anyway, but if you don't clean it, that's just gross. So that's why I'm sorry if you have this in your home and if you love it, go for it, but just not for me. Next, I wanna talk about crushed velvet. Normal velvet, beautiful, love it. Crushed velvet, I'm talking about that really sort of dated synthetic looking velvet that is very over the top and generally comes in like a silvery gray you know the one i'm talking about let's get it on screen um this bothers me because firstly it was never on trend um but if you have this in your home it will definitely date your home this is very far away from what people are looking to do in their homes now it's very far away from current trends the current trend is much more towards natural textiles, natural fabrics, an earthy palette. This feels very glitzy, very synthetic. Um, not a fan, never have been, never will be. My other issue with it is that like, when I pick a sofa fabric, I want the sofa not just to look good, I want it to feel good. And I feel like if you were to touch one of those crushed velvet sofas, it would just feel I don't know, like plasticky and synthetic-y, like it would probably give you a static shock on a hot day. That's how I feel about these sofas. I'd rather stand than sit on one of these sofas. Let's just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> People are gonna be shocked by this one, but I'll bear with me. I'll explain why I have a problem. I am so over seeing fake Pierre Genre chairs. I'm gonna show you on the screen what these look like in case you're not familiar. These have been all over Instagram. I mean, if I see another image on Instagram or Pinterest with one of these chairs, I'm gonna scream. I love the authentic original ones. They came from India. There was not that many of them, so there's no way that all these ones that I'm seeing now are authentic. 
I just feel like, especially if you're an interior designer and you have one of these in your project, it just looks like you're jumping on a bandwagon. This is trendy. Let's tick that box. You know, for me, it's not a comfortable chair. It's timeless if it's the authentic original version. If it's a reproduction, you know, you're wasting your money or you're wasting your client's money. This is not a trend that's gonna look good in five to 10 years time. It was the it chair from like four years ago. And it's a bit similar to fashion. Like if you have the it handbag, that everyone covets. The problem with that is it's really cool for six months or 12 months. But once it's gone, everyone looks at your bag and they're like, oh, that bag was from like 2020. This is the same thing with this chair. It will date your home. So if you haven't already bought one, please don't jump on that bandwagon. That trend is dead. So let's talk about rugs. I mean, I love a good rug. I'll tell you what I do not love. I hate a shagpa rug. Like shaggy rugs give me the ink. I think my main issue with them, apart from the fact they feel very sort of like 1960s and not in a cool way is the fact that they're just a breeding ground for germs and dirt there's no way you can keep that clean kind of in a similar way that i'm not a fan of faux planting walls i do not love shaggy rugs maybe there's an exception like if someone wants to share with me a good exception that will prove me wrong i'm all ears and all eyes but for me, they always tend to be very synthetic. Sometimes if we look at this example here, you can see there's even like glistening bits of like shiny, I don't even know what that is, like metallic tufts coming through. Again, it feels like it's gonna give you a static shock on a hot day. And they also quite often tend to be too small for the space. You can see in this first image, the front legs of the sofa aren't on the rug. That was always like my number one rule, you have to have a rug that's big enough for the room because if you put a rug that's too small, it's gonna make your room feel smaller. It also feels less cozy, less inviting. And um, so even if you can't fit the back legs of the sofa, that's not a problem, just the front legs need to be on. Um, yeah, just don't like them. Feel like you wouldn't wanna to touch them, you wouldn't wanna clean them and you wouldn't want to live with them. So I do not like shaggy rugs and I'm going to stand by that one. I'm sure they're going to come back in fashion, but for me, it will always be a no. I much prefer natural fibers, whether it's silk or wool or sisal or a backer. You know, these are materials that are going to last. They're timeless. They will wear well um, and they're easy to clean. So no more shaggy rugs, please. Next up is overly sculptural furniture. Now this furniture will look great in a photo it is not so good to sit on. Let me show you what I mean. Like, if you zoom in here, this looks very cool, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I would be okay with that being my project from a selfish designer point of view because it looks good in a picture. But can you imagine sitting on that, watching a movie, getting cozy? Absolutely not. Like, this is the kind of thing you should have in a waiting room of an office or maybe an art gallery. This kind of thing should not be in your home. Your home is for living in. Like. It shouldn't just be about what looks good in a photo, it should also be about what feels nice to sit on. It's, you know, a sofa is for sitting on after all. You know, this one's probably the best one. I mean, this one, like, what is, what is that? Like, can you even sit on it? It just looks like a knot. Um, and I also think this is another trend similarly to the Pierre Genre chair. It's been overdone so much. They tend to be in like a white boucle fabric and then they have these sphere cushions as well. And every time I see a sphere cushion, I just think, that's great, but where do you actually sit? Like the whole point of a normal cushion is that it's there to support your back or you can recline on them. Okay, sometimes we might go a bit over the top and put too many, but with the sphere cushion, like there's no room for anyone to sit down. I just, I don't get them. Like I hope that that trend goes away. You'll never see a sphere cushion in my projects. Next on the chopping board is those mass-produced dining chairs. They tend to come in like a synthetic velvet and then they have like very sort of cheap metal legs, generally in a bright gold finish. The reason I really dislike these is because firstly, mass-produced furniture in general, like I'm all for high, low sourcing from different places, but these to me just, there's nothing long term, nothing beautiful about these. These are not going to be an enduring design. They're generally very badly made. The fabric particularly bothers me because for a dining chair, you know, you're going to eat and drink on these chairs. The fabric needs to be very hard wearing. We tend to use chairs that have indoor outdoor fabrics or maybe like leather on the inside and a beautiful fabric on the outside. These have 
the very synthetic velvet on the front and the back. And I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, maybe it's just me, but one of the things I particularly find cringy about these chairs is that if you ever look at the seat pad, if someone has sat there with like maybe sweaty trousers or like slightly damp trousers, you know where I'm going with this, you can see their bum print on the chair. And I'm like, this feels obscene. This needs to be censored. Like I do not want to see whoever sat there before, you know, their bum print. I don't want to do it. Um, and I've seen these in really strange places, like even in Cartier and Harrods, I was there the other day and I love all their interior architecture. They have some really beautiful design. And then I looked down at the chair and it was the cheap synthetic velvet that imprints quite easily and there slap bang in the middle of the chair was a bum print. And it made me not want to sit on the chair. So yes, these synthetic velvet mass produced chairs I don't love them, I feel like it, it's lazy design, like it's an easy way to go because I get that when you're buying dining chairs there's a lot of them to buy, you know they can add up quite quickly the cost of dining chairs but there's great alternative high street places like Oka does great dining chairs, I source from them for my own home, um, I'm pretty sure Ikea's got some. Maybe I'll do an IKEA video one day, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like my team will probably abandon me if I do that, although there is a little bit of me that wants to do it. There's a few antiques websites that I go to, but even if you go on eBay or just Google, you know, a set of like five, a set of four, six, eight dining chairs, antiques, there's so many you can get, and then that adds a lot of character to your home. You can get them recovered, make them personal to you. Right, next up we have glitzy wallpaper. I mean, I just can't. If I see another glitzy wallpaper, I just want to get a steamer out myself and take it off the wall. Um, I love wallpaper, I love natural textures, I love paper, you know, grass cloth, linen, silk. If you can't do a good quality, nice wallpaper, just don't do it at all. Like the vinyl ones that are very shiny, have little bits of crushed pearl in them, or even the worst of the worst I saw one the other day. Um, shiny wallpaper that also has LED lights in it, just no, like it wasn't even a trend, it definitely will never be a trend, just let it go, like wallpaper should be wallpaper, there's so many incredible wallpapers out there, like we love using chinoiserie, that's a beautiful wallpaper that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years, we've got a collection with Fremantel, I'll link in the description box, but if you don't want to spend a lot of money on wallpaper, you don't need to because actually the biggest trend right now is more towards painted walls, you know, using lime wash paint or lime plaster. It gives you that really nice chalky feel and it's also really much more environmentally friendly. So don't put up a glitzy wallpaper. If you've got it from 10 years ago, okay, fine. I'm not saying you have to strip everything out of your house, but definitely don't put one up if you haven't got it already. Next up, we have glass topped furniture. I'm talking glass topped coffee tables, glass topped side tables, consoles, you name it. The reason I don't like these, firstly, it's very dated. It was very sort of 1990s. And there's so many great alternatives out there right now, whether it's wood or marble is amazing, or even like a, like a painted finish. Like I've got an amazing coffee table in my living room from Portramana and it's a faux stone. So I know a lot of people out there like to use glass because they think it won't stain. Um, there are so many alternatives that you can use. The other reason why I don't like glass topped furniture is, and I used to have a glass topped coffee table in my living room, so I, I'm speaking from personal experience. They make, it makes a horrible sound. Like when you put a coffee mug or a glass or anything down on the table, it sounds like it's gonna break imminently, which makes you feel on edge, makes you feel a bit stressed. And I think your interior should all be about making you feel more relaxed, more calm. And for me, glass top furniture doesn't do that. It, I also worry about with like animals and children, how safe it can be. Um, even if it's reinforced glass and it breaks, it's just a disaster waiting to happen. So I don't like glass top tables. I think they're not the safest option out there. And for me, they just feel very cold and uninviting. So goodbye glass top tables. Okay, so we had a lot of fun while we were researching for this video. I just went on a Google wormhole. And one of the most offensive things that I came across was diamante on your furniture. <laughs> Sorry, Ollie's got the giggles. Like diamante um, on your headboard or diamante on your handles. Um, I'm sorry if I have to break this to you, but it's just not okay. Like diamante and furniture should never mix. Like on your jewelry maybe, 
maybe even shoes, definitely never furniture. I'm gonna share with you a few images on screen of like the worst offenders that we came across. So brace yourself. I feel like I need to give like a trigger warning because it definitely triggers me. Oh, first up we have this, well, there's so many things wrong with this. I don't even know where to start. The mirror, the crystal handles, the diamante around the edge. It's like they just kept looking at this piece of furniture and thinking, how can I make it tackier? And the fact that everything is matching as well, that's also a no-no for me. Like, don't buy a whole suite of furniture from one supplier in the same range. Like, don't have the matching chest of drawers, the matching side tables and the matching bed. It just, it looks lazy. Like, you can have so much more fun designing your home than just going to one supplier and buying the whole range. Paneling can be done and it can add so much character and beauty and interest into your home. If it's done badly, it just will date your home. It makes it look very cheap and badly designed. So these are the things that you need to do to make sure that your paneling is not the bad paneling, it's the good paneling. Firstly, pick a profile of the plant on molding and the plant on molding is the actual sort of beading that you put on the wall to give the illusion of paneling. So you wanna pick a profile that works with your other architectural details, like your cornice, your architrave like you have here, um, and your skirting. And what that means is that, say for example, if you lived in an art deco home and it had very angular um, cornice and skirting and architrave, don't go for something that's very curved. And similarly, if you have very curved, sort of more Georgian features, don't go for something very angular. You're trying to give the illusion that it was always there. The other most common mistake people make is they choose a profile that's way too chunky um, and then it just looks overpowering, it doesn't look elegant or delicate, it just looks like you can imagine what the wall looked like before they put the plant on moulding and you can see that it's an addition, it doesn't look like it's part of the fabric of the home. And then the worst thing that people do, and this is what really drives me crazy, is when they don't mark out the right places for it to go. What I mean by that is if you have a window and you have panelling next to the window, the top of the panelling should line up with the top of the window. But if you have a Roman blind above that window and your Roman blind, bear with me, should go higher than your window because it's giving the illusion of taller ceilings, it's making sure it's not blocking any light, don't line up your panelling with the top of the window, line it up with where your Roman blind will go because that's what you're gonna see when the room's finished. You want, as you look around the perimeter of the room, you want everything to line up, and that's what's gonna feel very sort of cohesive, very considered. One of our interior architects, Mark, drew this up as an example. This is one of our projects to show what we would consider good paneling and what we would consider bad paneling. So if you look at the top image, first of all, let's zoom in on the windowsill, because we've just spoken about that. You can see that windowsill is going far too close to the molding. It doesn't look good. Um, what you should do there is trim it back so it's in line with the window frame. And then if we zoom up a little bit and we look at where the moulding's um, been applied at the top of the wall, when they've done this, they've looked at where the window will go, which is the dotted line, but they haven't thought about where the top of the Roman blind will go. And again, you're getting that step detail where it just doesn't feel um, considered. And the last thing is showing that this is a very clunky, chunky molding profile. It doesn't feel light or elegant. Whereas if we look at the bottom example, you can see we've trimmed back that windowsill. We've used a much thinner, more elegant, detailed profile molding. And then the paneling lines up with the top of the window blind. So that feels considered, it feels good. That would be good paneling. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, if you haven't unsubscribed and you're not hating me because you have some of these things in your home, thank you for watching. I hope this has been fun. I've certainly enjoyed doing it. And if you'd like more regular updates, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Sophie Patterson Interiors and also now TikTok because we've just joined in the last month and we're feeling a little bit lonely over there. I think we've only got like a thousand followers. So come and join us. We'll have lots of fresh content to share with you there and I'll see you very soon.